it's not beautiful everyone there is a huge elephant coming this way and as amusing as Scott Dyson is I'm going to save my laughter for after we've watched this rather astounding scene we're in amongst thousands of wildebeest and in amongst them a huge elephant bull probably I'd say about 40 years old yeah that's a good age to be really and he's interacting with us although it almost doesn't look like he is he's coming along the same little track that we're sitting on and I don't believe that he doesn't know we're here I'm sure he's fully aware of us and this is the thing with elephants they will choose to come and interact from time to time and try to do so without your sort of realizing that that's what they're doing or without them let me try that again thinking that you don't realize what it is that they're doing so I'm just going to sit here quietly and see what he does oh it's wonderful to watch the wildebeest getting out of his way Isn't that cool? Uh, he's got off our little road now, but he's going to go. Let's just see how close he wants to come. Now, uh, we've often spoken about how elephants seem to sometimes enjoy our presence, either because they are bored or because they feel some sense of, I don't know, camaraderie. Could it possibly be? Maybe. Uh, sometimes they pay attention to us because they're irritated by us, but I don't think this guy is. He's got a good set of tusks on him. And you can just see the way his walk has changed slightly. You see how it's become a bit more of a swagger as he's got closer to us. Looks a little bit like Byron coming down towards the uh, dinner table at Juma. Especially if they're the odd lady in camp, you know. Well, Sandy, yes, you say, look at the size of that elephant, he's massive. Uh, well, he is, he is a, he's an elephant, and he's an elephant in his prime, and he's an elephant that is, yeah, or in fact, I think he's older than 40 now that looking at him, I'd say he's probably pushing 50, actually. He's just starting to lose a little bit of mass. That could also be, of course, because he's been excluded from the plains by the wildebeest, not by them so much as by his own choice and those elephants that you saw today walking down into the Mara they do tend to move up away from the plains during the course of the migration season here I mean, he is a fantastic creature isn't he very very impressive animal Michael, you're wondering if there's a higher density of elephant bulls here or in the Sabi sand. Michael, I think that you'll find that the Sabi sand has got a slightly higher density uh, because of the artificial water provision that there is there. And especially at this time of year when so many of the areas of the Kruger Park are waterless and you know they're providing much less water in the National Park itself at the moment I think you'll find certainly that elephants are coming into the Sabi sand drawn by the artificial water provided by the landowners and if you go to a place like Biffles Hook for example every landowner who's got a house there has got a dam in front of that house and those elephants are going to come through here there in this area they, that isn't the case there is only one source of water and that of course is the enormous Mara River. Yeah, there's the, the odd puddle around the place, but it really is very limited to that. So I think at this time of the year, yeah, the Sabi sand would have a higher population or higher density, not necessarily population, than the Mara does. What a wonderful sighting that was. We're going to carry on and we're going to go back to Byron.